in real world, when you want to do robotics and you want to design a human arm or a humanoid arm, these are going to be continuous space. And let's say your arm has seven degrees of freedom. So for each joint, you're going to have a couple of degrees of freedom. And let's say in total, you have seven degrees of freedom. Simplify your model a lot. The space is continuous because you can continuously twist your wrist. That's a continuous variable. It's not discrete. It's not, your actions are not discrete anymore. Even if you quantize it, even if you say, I'm going to pick a K and quantize it. And let's say I just do those robotic moves that are quantized. Only three states for my wrist. Negative, don't move, positive. You're going to get three to the power of seven for the dimensionality of the action space. So it's going to become high dimensional. And basically, it's going to become high dimensional output. And it's going to turn into more parameters, much more parameters. Because the last layer of your neural network is uh, usually fully connected. And that's going to depend on the dimensionality of the action space. So that's not feasible. We need to look for an alternative. I'm going to give the background today. And then the rest of it we're going to cover next week. You have an environment. And your environment could be a stochastic. You're currently at time step t. You have an observation from the environment. You take an action. And then your action, we don't want to quantize it. We want to live in the continuous space. So it's going to be a vector. So this is now n-dimensional compared to, for instance, this, can, this is going to be seven-dimensional compared to 2,187 dimensions. If you manage to somehow live in continuous space, you're going to collect a reward. You're going to see your state, which is a concatenation of your observation, action, observation, action, etc., because you have a partially observed environment. If it were fully observed, if the current observation was enough information for you, then ST would just be the last entry. So this is just the definition of fully observed environment. And then you're going to have a policy that's going to depend on the state that you're currently at. Given that I'm currently at this state, the policy is going to define a probability distribution over the set of actions that could happen. So another way to think about it is that this is a conditional distribution. Condition on the state, you have a distribution. And you're going to sample from this policy and make your decisions according to sampling from this policy. I think I'm going to stop here and continue the, next, the rest of it next session. For those of you who have questions, I'll be around. I have a question. Sure. Can you go back to the previous um, paper? Uh, before we go there, are there any questions from this slide or no? OK, perfect. Um, one thing I'm not 100% on is um, I guess the experience we play in general. So I get that for every um, state, which is a collection of images, we get a vector of um, actions. And then with some epsilon probability, we take the non greedy um, action. And then we are landing in, um, I guess, the next state. Um, I didn't quite understand the, the reason for the experience we play here. Or what do we do with it? So that's actually a good question. What happens if you want to know the value of something? What is the value of experience replay? Just remove it and see what's going to happen. If you don't do experience replay, the data that you're sampling are going to depend heavily on the parameters of your Q function. Okay, But then we know that when you're doing optimization, you're taking tiny gradient steps. It means that theta i is very close to theta i minus 1. Okay. It means that these samples that you're generating, basically the, you're going to take an action and then you're going to, you're, and you're taking your actions based on the parameters that are already similar to the parameters that you're currently at and you want to optimize. So it means that these actions are going to be highly correlated. They are going to all get scattered in a tiny region of your space because they are, going, they are getting generated by Q. And it means that they are not IID samples from a distribution. They are not diverse. So your data set is not diverse. But then the question is, do you really care about diversity? And the answer is yes. Why? Because usually supervised learning, the type of learning that we were doing so far in this course, or even the unsupervised learning, your data 
needs to be sampled. A main assumption was that your data is sampled IID from some distribution. And if it is not sampled IID, your learning is not gonna progress. So you're not gonna learn your neural network. So it's very important for these samples to be IID. Otherwise, the entire supervised learning and unsupervised learning is gonna go up in the air. It's not gonna converge. Okay, I hope that answers your question. I think so. So the reason we're doing it is just, yeah, basically what you said, makes sense.